Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Monday, December the 12th. Today is our go nowhere because nobody knows what's going on day. And then we come out with CPI tomorrow morning. And then we have the FOMC meeting on Wednesday afternoon. So we are undoubtedly going to be shaken, not stirred. We are undoubtedly going to be shaken. And like I promised uh, in the post I put over there yesterday in the alert room, Suresh and I, and I used to use a another system back when the guy was still alive uh, on tracking astrological cycles with the planets. But the full moon is also a very applicable one because obviously the full moon and the tides and the changes of everything. And Suresh has been doing it all year. And again, I said that I would go ahead and look into it and bring out our video. So that's what we're going to discuss today, since today is going to be basically expected to be a wash. Uh, on January 18th, we had the full moon and four sessions later, we put in the low. Okay. Okay. Now, on February 17th, we had the full moon, and four sessions later, we had the Russia invasion, and that was our low, right there at 41.14.65. And go back over here into March. In March, on March 18th, we had the full moon, and four sessions prior, we posted the low, the double bottom low there at 41.57, 41.61, and then we ran up there to that 46.37 that we all remember back in March come over here into April. And in April, we posted a dip low back there on the same, uh, or sorry, on April 18th was the uh, full moon. And three sessions later, we posted that B wave high, that, that wave too high right there at 4512 was just fractionally higher uh, right up there. And then we wound up closing red on that day. Uh, I don't remember what was on April 21, but again, I'm counting the days here from the full moon. That's what I'm focused on. Uh, come over here into May. And May 16th, we had the full moon. Four sessions later, we had our low, that 3810. And then we went on to rally up into the 4170s. Come over here into June, and we had the full moon on June 14th. Two sessions later, we posted the lows there in June, 36, 37. Uh, come over into July. July, we had the full moon and the low on the exact same day on July 14th. Uh, come into August. August, we had the full moon on August the 12th or August the 13th. I don't remember if it was on the weekend. And two sessions later, we posted that high there in August, 43.25. So you're seeing the correlation that we've got going on here. September had the full moon. Then the high came one day later. This was on the weekend. This was on the 10th. I remember that. And over here, September 12th, on Monday morning, bam, posted the high there at 41.20. Uh, come over here into October. You have the full moon on October the 10th, and three sessions later, we posted the year lows, 3491. Come over here into November. We had the full moon on November the 8th. Three sessions prior, we posted the lows, 37, 36, 7, or 3700, and we had that rally. Now, where we are right now, we have our full moon that just took place on Thursday. Now, Two sessions prior, we had that low down there at 39.18. But if you start counting your one, two, three, and four, one session was Friday, two sessions being today, and then you have your CPI tomorrow, and you have your FOMC on Wednesday. So as far as we go with a count, just counting from the full moon, we are far, far from being able to say without any shadow of a doubt that the full moon cycle has already completed. This is still very wide open that we could possibly, we could possibly lose this 3930 area and obviously start heading down lower. And for that, I want to go into the charts really quick before we go into anything else. Now, some people are going to look at the futures and say, holy shit, we're at 39.75. We're only up seven points. And that's because you had your contracts roll over 
So now we're into the March contracts. Now we're no longer in the December contracts. So these make that adjustment. And that's why you have that major gap up, which looks as if it's a 25 point gap up, but all that it is, is it's the adjustment for the futures contract. So we're only up seven points right now, nothing to go out there and be alarmed about. Over here on the SPX, there's nothing that has changed, nothing whatsoever. As long as we are holding that 3911, there is a chance that we are still looking for that 4150, 4170 area, possibly even up into 4225, possibly. And again, a lot of people will be looking here and say, well, we're here. How in the hell are we going to get up there? And I'm glad that you asked that question because that's why we go over onto here. Now, this was your November CPI. November the 10th CPI, the NASDAQ closed up 7%. The S&P closed up 5.5%. This is your October CPI. On October, you had all of the indexes closing up a little bit close to 2.5% on the day. That was the October CPI. Now we go into the September CPI. September CPI, you had the NASDAQ down 5%. The S&P was down 4% on the day. So, and, and right where we are right now, 39.32 was where we closed back there on that September CPI. So it again can be completed that we have already seen our dip and we are going to be heading up for that 41.50, 42.50 area, but everything will be dependent upon the CPI report tomorrow. So what I am planning to do, because I've got a couple of little things that I'm looking at here. By the way, Netflix, Netflix, we're looking at 345. I'm looking here at the put call ratio. And I tell you, every time the put ratio gets to this excessive level, it never works out. It, it just, it, it doesn't work out. That's just the way that it is. I'm not sitting here and saying that we're not going to be going down because I'm going to be discussing later in the room about, and in the email, about maybe taking a position to go out there and protect yourself. Whereas you've got two calls, you're going to go by one put. So in case we do fall apart, your put will salvage yourself. Whereas if we run, you don't care about your put because you're going to be able to make more money on it anyway. But here is your CPCE chart. And as you can see here, these ratios in November where everybody was getting short, just short, excessively short, excessive beyond all fucking reason short. And you just saw what we did in November. We didn't go too far because we were in that three week hold period, but we just had a 10% rally off the November fucking lows at 3,700. We went up 10%, 3,700 to 4,100. And, and here's everybody getting short the entire time. And again, they got short again on Friday. Friday, CPCE was up 40%. So just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, all right, this is what your CPCE is. A rising put call ratio or a ratio greater than 0 0.7 or exceeding one means that equity traders are buying more puts than calls. It suggests that bearish sentiment is building in the market. So, you know, again, this is what everybody appears to be expecting is going to be coming. I shared over in the chat room that fucking post from that idiot who's out here just blasting Twitter with fucking spam about I'm right, I'm right. And I and I ask anybody, go look at that and go read the thread. The very third, the second or the third comment that he makes in his thread, he goes, I posted six award-winning thesis papers that I submitted anonymously. Are you fucking serious? Anonymously fucking submitted, no name because it's anonymous, and then he's taking credit saying, I did that. I'm the one who did that. I won awards for it. So, you know, again, here, these are what we've had. So we've got to look back in order to be able to look forward. But again, just, just going off of the full moon calendar, it can fit that we hit our low 
back there on Tuesday last week, it can fit. But it can also fit that we're looking for a low to be coming here, coming on Wednesday or after the FOMC meeting. And just to bring all of that into perspective, I'll bring you in and what we're looking at here uh, do, 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 is where am I looking? I no, not what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, do, 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 do. No, sorry. I'll get into it. Oh, yeah, here we are. Uh, tracking, tracking weeks, tracking down weeks, tracking big down weeks. Uh, sorry if I gave you a headache. Last week, we had a 134-point range on the SPX. We were down 117 points from the open. Go back to the prior red week that we had. We were only down 12 points. It was a 122-point range. We had that big green week with our with our big CPI up 250, 212 points on the week, 250 point range, 213 point range back then. And again, that's with your volatility. But the one thing that I want to, again, stress is here, going back here on to November 30th, when we had Powell speak, you had a 122 point move on that day, 141 point range. Back here on November 10th, when we had CPI, we closed up 207 points. We had a 111 point gap up, 98 point range during the day. So whatever move is going to come from CPI come tomorrow, it is going to come the majority overnight between that 830 and 930 opening bell, meaning overnight. So positioning for this is going to be something that needs to be considered on each individual level as to not being overexposed on only one side and then having it go against you. I, again, think that we are heading further up and not further down, but I still respect the chart and the chart is already telling me Nobody knows anything right now because we are sitting here in this 3910, 3930, 3950 plateau level. But if anyone recalls going back into any kind of history, the longer that you stay at that level and don't break down on it, the better chances you have of rising up through that. Looking over at the four hour chart, nothing really other than a very fractional buy divergence that you've got over here. So, it, again, is going to be something that needs to be considered. I apologize for taking up too much of your time on a Monday morning, but I do think that this is relevant, and that's the reason why I took the time out to share it. Have a fantastic morning. I will see you all in the chat room.